So I'm going to talk about the pivots, the constant need to pivot and why this is not good for a business. So the original business model, which actually was sustainable, even though they were doing $17,000 dinners at Narset, when the video gets half a million plus views, it does pay for the dinner in terms of marketing and promotion. I do marketing for a living. I sell ads, I run ads. I'm very famous for Google ads. If you do Google ads, you know who I am. Um, I won all the Google ad awards. I have been flown out to HQ. I've given speeches. Uh, I just came back from a speech about NFTs and uh, very nice. Um, it was the DRI, so a business litigation and a lot of big lawyers, a lot of big law firms and I got to speak to them which is great, you got to meet a lot of connections. I think one of them, one of the lawyers that I most connected with is from South Korea. So we'll see if we can do a project together. I love their original marketing because it was scrappy and it worked. Like most large YouTube channels, you probably don't know this, they have a whole team of people. Some people do the lighting, some people do the script writing, some people do the editing, and then obviously you have the talent. For such a small team, which I can just narrow down because Marco was kind of a dead fish in the beginning. Uh, it was Anthony and Darby. That was essentially the team. I, I think if you remove everyone else, you remove the Mike Rubens, you remove, even though he's a fascinating character, of course, you remove the, the Vicks and the Alfreds because Alfreds and Vicks didn't come until later. And by that time, they were already changing the marketplace. If you remove all the other characters, the Clover May, the AJs, and the Dylan, and so on, I think the video, I think the channel still works with one Darby and one Anthony, and that combination was very impressive in that field. So, in the gray mar watch market deal, we have to go back and see what it used to be. That was a very boring video. Like the videos that were being produced were very similar to watches and whiskey with Roman where if you are a non-watch person, you don't want to watch it. It's so boring. To pivot from that model that was clearly working, that was clearly very interesting, that was, it was a, the model was very, in, uh, very, very easy to explain. It's a vlog style. It's a, it involved luxury, luxury items like watches, luxury cars, luxury meals. It involves a little bit of entrepreneurship, a little bit of business advice, a little bit of the, no return on investment and the financial advice at the end of the video, which they were, they were very transparent about. And most importantly, it was done essentially with one Darby. So it was a low, it didn't cost that much money. And then the way to improve this model would be a higher second Darby, a third Darby and so on, which is what they have done now, but they've also pivoted. They pivoted to charity. Charity is one of the most horrendous things to talk about on YouTube because people will always say that you didn't donate enough. People will say, oh, well, I have this other charity. It's a skateboard park and you know, it's great. Uh, people always criticize some of the charities, especially if it's a skateboard park. You know, people may not like that over another charity. And that was really bad. And it seemed like a cop out for basically doing this social media blackout thing that did not work at all. In hindsight, you know, and the, when I was doing in the moment, it didn't make sense for them to pivot, in my opinion, unless they were absolutely certain it would work. Well, it turned out that they pivoted and they really didn't know what to do. The execution was incredibly poor. The producer Michael video should have been shot before, before they, you know, let that video and then they, cause they knew, understood as soon as that video goes live, there's going to be a barrage of negative comments, kind of like what it is today. But at the time, you know, it would be new for them because the majority of their comments prior to that point were really positive. And the way that they, I think the reason he's pivoting so much is he's reading too many of these comments. Clove May is a very good example. I, I really enjoyed Clove May. I, again, she doesn't know much about watches, but like, does Liz know that much about watches? No. Does Dylan at the time, does any of these people know much about watches when they joined? The answer is no. Maybe they had a passion for it. Like Mike Rubin did. 
<laughs> Mike Rubio is always trying to get the new watch. <laughs> he reminds me of the other lawyer who's just like so into watches that like he doesn't care. Anyway, what I'm suggesting is the pivot, the constant pivoting is due to Anthony reacting to negative comments. They got rid of Clover and May because the comments were really negative about her. But my argument would be that was the beginning of the end was Clove May. Not because Clove May was a bad person or did a bad job, but because he listened to the comments. And as soon as the comments, so I tell you, I've done YouTube for many years. I don't know the channel called New Law Student, but I obviously have my bigger channel is MTG Line. And the comments you get from people who have never made a YouTube video and they're giving you advice, um, don't listen to it. Because if their advice was so good and they really believed in it, they would all already have a YouTube channel larger than yours, right? I've never gotten criticism. I've never, or I've never gotten the type of vitriol I get from people who don't have any, who've never made a video. Like it, making videos is hard, guys, on YouTube. It's difficult. And he listened. And as soon as he listened, the audience is like, oh my gosh, he listened to us. It's interactive. It's no longer, you know, he makes the videos and we watch them. We can impact who is getting hired. And that's why they went out after Alfred. That's why they went after Vic. And they went after all of these. It's no question in my mind that that was the point of no return. That was the pivot point. That was the point where the pivot was done when it should not have been done. They should not have fired Clove May. Because not only did that show that they're willing to fire someone based on comments, which is you know bad, that's really bad. It showed the power the commenters had. And then you know they took down the videos and it was all because of comments. So it was all based on everything after they blew up initially, it was based on negative comments. And I would imagine that Anthony created his own channel because he thought he would get away from the negative comments at the time on the timepiece gentleman, which obviously didn't work because that's not how things are. So yeah, when, when you pivot so much, when you pivot based on what people think about you and you're no longer the timepiece gentleman, you're just whatever the comments say you are, you're a Travis. And so it's hard, you know, you need really tough skin in this game. Uh, when you watch the Charlie bit my finger at the time where we could still see negative, I mean, I, I mean, just, just, just the fact alone that YouTube had to take away dislikes should tell you enough about the uh, people watching the video, right? The fact, you know, I always use the example that you know these cat videos and even my really cute dog videos, they'll get like plenty of negatives and negative comments and stuff, and it just doesn't blow my mind. It's a 15 second video of my dog on, on grass. On, on, you know, playing in grass. But oh yeah, a bunch of bombardment of, and, and you know, it's like Charlie bit my finger, it's a cute kid. I don't love kids, I don't have kids, I don't want kids. But I can say, oh, this video is really cute, let me like it. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of dislikes on this video. And it could be like a, a video about something bad happening and, there, and then people will like it. So in YouTube where everyone's anonymous, and I'll talk more about this in a context of my neighbor and the real ramifications they may have in real life. Um, yeah, it's really cheek or chic to, to make fun of people, to harass them, to bully them. I mean, it's what online is. If you're anonymous and you feel empowered and you had a bad day, why not leave a bad, you know, it's what, uh, I watched another YouTube channel, he talks, he, he's in the, my same space that I am, but he does more eSports. And he says that, hey, whenever you are, you know, getting these negative comments, click on their profile, like he's talking about Reddit. So if you click on the Reddit profile, you can see where, what they were talking about in the last, you know, day or two. And the people who like leave him negative comments and the people who leave me negative comments, they just are terrible people. Some of the things they've said in other posts, some of the posts they've made, it's just like, ugh, like, you know, I would not. So if you are taking advice on who to hire, who to fire from anonymous people who may not have the best interest in mind for you, right? Then that's the point of no return. Because once you let them affect you, 
And once you know, you know, once you stop doing the thanks for bumping my post, you know they got to him. They got to Anthony, they did. And he started pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. Every pivot was based on the comment section. But what do they know about running a business, right? And I know not to like kick the angry business, but I'm just speaking from experience myself. Um, I had a neighbor, he was very appalled when I tried to add him on LinkedIn. He, he commented and deleted. His strategy was this. He would, uh, he would say very inflammatory things. He would make gay jokes. I think he was a racist. Like I'm almost certain he was a racist. Um, he lives very close to where I live and he would make all these funny jokes all the time about me and so on. And then one day, you know, I added him on LinkedIn and then he was like, what, what why do you add me on LinkedIn, bro? And we had shared connections and so on. And, you know, and then, he st and then what he did was he leaves like a dozen or so hateful posts on your next door, on hateful comments on your next door ranging from homophobic jokes to, you know, all types of bad things to over exaggeration to downright, you know, lies and slander about how many times you posted and so on. I mean, again, this is all can be proven in court. I have taken screenshots of it because I do intend to eventually sue him. Uh, and he can't help himself. He literally cannot help himself. Why would you ever take advice from this guy? You know, <laughs> I mean, why would you ever take advice from a person like this? And it, it's it's crazy. He has a family. He has kids that are older, that are in college. I mean, he's like a grown adult. And all he does every day is he trolls people like me online. Uh, and like when I say me, I mean he trolls Asian people online. And then he will delete the post or edit the post as soon as there's any flack on his side. So it seems like he's trying to help when the previous post that has been deleted or edited is extremely, extremely homophobic. And you have to screenshot. So the strategy I've used against him is I screenshot it, right? And then I post, repost it. I'll, I notice you delete it. And then he'll blame it on next door and stuff, which isn't how it works. So anyway, why would you listen to that? Why would you pivot? I think the Clove May was the end, the beginning of the end because he pivoted based on the comment section. I mean, you, you, you're you the one with the YouTube channel. You're the one who's blowing past everybody at the time. You're the one who's gonna, you know, over 100,000 subscribers. Why are you listening to someone with zero? Like, do they really know how to run a YouTube channel better, better than you? I don't think so. Hi guys.